Senate will come to order. In accordance with the provisions of the Constitution of the State of Kansas and KSA 46-142D, the 2021 session of the Kansas Senate will come to order. Senators and our guests, please give rise and attention to the chaplain followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We're grateful for another opportunity to serve in this capacity. Heavenly Father, we're in a season where division and conflict are permeating our society. Here at home and across this nation, the discord is running wild. Lord, you said in Luke chapter 11, verses 17 and 18, that people divided in civil conflict cannot survive. So, Lord, we need your peace, not a bogus pseudo-peace, but the real peace that only you can provide and only you can sustain. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 declares you, as the Prince of Peace. By the power of your word, you can speak and command things into existence. Realizing that you are the one we need to turn to, Cy Miller and his wife Jill wrote a prayer and turned it into a song asking you for that peace. And the need for that prayer song is so relevant for today. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, fill our hearts with the desires of this song. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as our Father, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in godly harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace and harmony. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin. Let it begin right here. Let it begin with me. Oh, amen. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I appoint Corey Carnahan to serve as temporary secretary of the Senate. 
till such a time that a permanent secretary can be appointed. The clerk will call the roll. District 1, Dennis Pyle. District 2, Marcy Francisco. District 3, Tom Holland. District 4, David Haley. District 5, Jeff Pittman. District 6, Pat Petty. District 7, Ethan Corson. District 8, Cindy Halsher. District 9, Beverly Gossage. District 10, Mike Thompson. District 11, Kelly Warren. District 12, Karen Tyson. District 13, Richard Hildebrand. District 14, Michael Fagg. District 15, Virgil Peck. District 16, Ty Masterson. District 17, Jeff Longvine. District 18, Christian O'Shea. District 19, Rick Kloss. District 20, Brenda Dietrich. District 21, Diana Sykes. District 22, Tom Hawk. District 23, Rob Olson. District 24, J.R. Clay. District 25, Mary Ware. District 26, Dan Kirshen. District 27, Jean Sullentrop. District 28, Mike Peterson. District 29, Oletha Fauscado. District 30, Renee Erickson. District 31, Carolyn McGinn. District 32, Larry Alley. District 33, Alicia Straub. District 34, Mark Steffen. District 35, Richard Wilborn. District 36, Elaine Bowers. District 37, Molly Bombard Baumgartner. District 38, Bud Estes. District 39, John Dahl. District 40, Richard Billinger. It's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Eric Rosen, Justice of the Kansas Supreme Court, who will administer the oath of office. Mr. Secretary, thank you. It's my honor to be here this afternoon in this beautiful, beautiful chamber. All right, well, will the 26 returning senators please stand for your oaths? If you're new, just remain seated. We'll get to you in a bit. Please raise your right hands. Do each of you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Kansas and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Senator of the State of Kansas, so help you God. Respond with, I do. Very good, congratulations. go until I get the go signal from Corey, I learned that. Um, new senators will now take their oath in groups. I'm gonna call each senator elect by district and name. At that time, the senator's guests can join them in the chamber. District five, Jeff Pittman. District seven, Ethan Corson. District eight, Cindy Holscher. District nine, Beverly Gossage. And district 11, Kelly Warren.
the current guests of those who are just sworn in, if you go ahead and exit the floor so we can make space for others. Thank you so much. The next five senators, District 14, Michael Fagg, District 15, Virgil Peck, District 18, Kristen, Kristen O'Shea, District 19, Rick Kluse, District 20, Brenda Dietrich. And those families may enter the chamber for the next five. Again, the guests of that last round, if you could exit the chamber to allow in some more folks. While we allow them to come in, the next round will be a round of four, District 24, J.R. Clays. District 30, Renee Erickson. District 33, Alicia Straub. District 34, Mark Steffen.
And again, those guests who just arrived at the last four, if you could exit the chamber just again to make us more, give us more space in the chamber. While they're exiting, I'd like to remind every member the visit the Secretary of the Senate to sign your oath of office. The, the one you just did is more ceremonial. Our office really needs that signature. It's pretty important. So when you, as soon as you get a chance, please see the Secretary of the Senate to make sure you sign that. The clerk will read the Majority Minority Caucus reports. Majority Party Caucus, December 2nd, 7th, 2020. Senators-elect of the majority party of the Senate met and caucused as required by KSA 46-142 and nominated the following officers for the term. Senate officers, President of the Senate, Ty Masterson, Vice President of the Senate, Rick Wilborn, caucus party officers, Majority Leader Gene Sullentrop, Assistant Majority Leader Larry Alley, and Majority Whip Richard Hildebrand, Ty Masterson, Chairperson, Majority Party Caucus. Majority Party Caucus, December 7th, 2020. The Senators-elect of the Minority Party of the Senate met and caucused as required by KSA 46-142 and nominated the following officers for the term. Democratic Leader, Diana Sykes. Assistant Democratic Leader, Aletha Falskado. Democratic Whip, Pat Petty. Agenda Chair, Marcy Francisco. Caucus Chair, Jeff Pittman. Diana Sykes, Chairperson, Minority Party Caucus. We'll now proceed with the business of election of officers. The chair recognizes a senator from Sedgwick, Senator Sullentrop, to nominate Senator Ty Masterson for president of the Senate. Good afternoon. Thank you. It's my pleasure to nominate the senator from Butler, Senator Masterson, as Senate president. For a second on the motion, the chair would recognize a senator from Johnson, Senator Sykes. I second the nomination of Senator Masterson as President of the Senate. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, the nominations will cease and Senator Ty Masterson will be elected by acclamation. The chair recognizes the senator from Sedgwick, Senator Solentrop, to nominate Senator Rick Wilborn for office of Vice President of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. It's my pleasure to nominate the senator from McPherson, Senator Wilborn, to the Senate Vice President position. For a second on the nomination, the chair recognizes the senator from Johnson, Senator Sykes. I second the nomination of Senator Wilburn as Vice President of the Senate. Are there any other nominations for Vice President? Seeing none, nominations will cease and Senator Rick Wilborn will be elected by acclamation. Would Senator Solentrop and Sykes please escort the newly elected president to the vice president to the front of the chamber to take his oath? Senator? Yeah, Senator, there's pictures here. You might want to take that off your ear.
Would Senator Solentrop and Sykes please escort the newly elected president of the Senate to the front of the center, Senate so he may take his oath of office from the justice. Mr. President, come take the gavel. Thank you all for being here. I do have a few remarks before I continue. I'd like to try and share, and I'm actually going to try and read it because I don't want to leave anything out or miss anybody. So to my colleagues, the newly elected, and those that have been my colleagues prior, I want to say thank you for your confidence in me to serve as your president. It is a tremendous honor to lead this body as we embark upon a historic and challenging session. With new leadership in our chamber on both sides, we start off with a clean slate and an opportunity to come together on behalf of the people of Kansas. I also want to congratulate each and every one of you for being elected to represent the people of your individual districts, especially in this beautiful and historical chamber. Each of us has a unique story on how we got here, and each story results in a unique perspective, which will be crucial as we deliberate. In addition to our diverse life experiences and philosophies, we also have varying levels of experience in the Capitol. Some of us have been here a minute. Others have come from across the rotunda, and yet others new to the process. The people of Kansas will be well served by this diverse expertise and experience that is present in the body today. I also want to thank my family. I love all of you dearly and simply would not be in this seat today if we're not for the incredible support every step of the way. For those who know, this is my family here in the VIP section today. <laughs> They've each paid their own price on the campaign trail for me, right? They each have a unique story to tell themselves and they've been my defender as often as I've been theirs. And I've actually watched each one of them overcome, well, each one of them over the age of four, overcome a unique and significant challenge in life and do that with courage. So I'm immensely proud of all of them. A debt of gratitude must be extended to all our families who, in attendance, who are in attendance today or watching or even listening online. In a special note, those who are no longer with us, to those in our very chamber today who have recently lost someone close to them, please know we are thinking about you and praying for you. To all our families who allow us to serve, we would simply not be able to do the jobs we're here to do without your love and support. So thank you. Today, even in the midst of these difficult and often tumultuous times we're in, let's take a moment to celebrate. There is still much to be thankful for. Our constitutions, both federal and state, this beautiful state capital and all who work here to make democracy flourish, the peaceful transfer of power and the rich traditions which we should never take for granted. The ability to engage in respectful and passionate debates about issues that come before us and most of all the people whom we serve. 
in every corner of this state who simply want to know their government is working for them. As we embark on this session and engage in doing the work we are sent here to do, we're reminded of the tremendous responsibility that rests on our shoulders and the opportunity to help people in all walks of life. As we debate and consider the bills before us, several words that represent what we need come to mind. Wisdom, discernment, respect, prudence, civility, integrity, humility. As we remember these important attributes as we debate, it will serve us well. We know there will be times that our debates are passionate, and that's okay. They should be. We're making important decisions that impact the lives of the people we serve, and there is often a great divide in what many see as the right direction. There will be a host of issues that we will discuss over the coming years, and there will be many tough votes along the way. In each instance, in each instance, let us always put our fellow Kansans first. Thank you again for the trust you have placed in me, and I look forward to working together for the citizens of our great state. God bless you all. Chair recognizes the Senator from Johnson, Senator Sykes. Mr. President, on behalf of the Senate Democratic Caucus, congratulations on your election as President of the Kansas Senate. Also, congratulations to the other Senate Republicans representing your caucus in their positions in leadership. To my fellow Democratic Senators, thank you for trusting in me to lead our caucus over the next four years. It's an honor to work with all of you I am grateful to be fighting for Kansas values alongside each of you. I would like to take the opportunity to thank my predecessor in leadership, Senator Anthony Hensley, for his decades of service to our state and our caucus. His principal dedication and grit have made Kansas a better state for our children and families. It is my hope that as a body, we will approach our coming work with those same values in our hearts. Congratulations to the 14 newly elected senators joining us in the chamber for the first time today. I know you all worked very hard to earn the confidence of your constituents, and I am confident you will work even harder to serve them well. I especially would like to thank my caucus's three freshman senators. Having campaigned alongside you, I know firsthand your deep commitment to championing policies that will improve the lives of Kansans. I am looking forward to seeing the great work that you do in the Senate. To our families and friends joining us in person or watching on the live stream, thank you for your support throughout the election cycle and for your continued support throughout our terms. Thank you to my husband, Jeffrey, and my two sons, William and Tyler. Come here. <laughs> you can wave. Um, like all legislative families, they understand that my calling to serve requires sacrifice and grace on their part, and I am blessed to have them by my side. Many Kansans rang in the new year with a renewed sense of hope and optimism after a year full of challenges for our country. This pandemic has required flexibility, sacrifice, and resiliency for the people of Kansas and our country. Already this year, over 58,000 vaccine doses have been administrated in Kansas. Our state secured more than $2.5 billion in capital investments last year, which will result in new jobs and a boost to our economy. We are not yet out of the woods but with a renewed sense of communal responsibility to keep our fellow Kansans safe, we can make this year better than last. I too am ringing in our new legislative session with hope and optimism that we will turn the challenges that we face into opportunities to move our state forward. The Democratic Caucus is resolved to work hard on behalf of the people of Kansas to listen to and learn from our neighbors and bring their ideas to the table, to approach those issues 
with a bipartisan spirit and to find opportunities for collaboration with our colleagues from across the aisle, to hold one another accountable to our common purpose and to lead with courage, compassion, and common sense. Because while there is much hope in the new year in our new session, our state still has a tough road ahead. The economic consequences of the pandemic present yet another roadblock in our path to recovery from years of devastation. Tens of thousands of vulnerable Kansans continue to lack access to affordable health care during one of the worst public health events in our country's history. Rural hospitals are closing when access to care is critical to saving lives from this deadly virus. Too many Kansans remain unemployed, underemployed, and struggle navigating a safety net that was neglected for decades and left underprepared to handle the current crisis. It is our responsibility to address these challenges head on, to move our state forward and to improve the lives of the people of Kansas. Each of us offers a unique perspective on the problems facing our state. We do not always agree on how best to respond, but we share a commitment to our neighbors and the communities that we represent. We share a common goal of creating a better future for Kansas children. In my tenure in the Senate, I have been most proud of the times that we put aside ideological differences to do what's best for Kansas families. Together, we have reversed failed tax policies, developed a new school finance formula ending a decade of litigation, enacted protections for survivors of domestic violence, and passed balanced budgets to put our state back on track. We have come together in good faith to learn, debate, and seek compromise. We have seized opportunities to govern with courage and conviction. While this does not paint a complete picture of our work, which can be frustrating and at times disheartening, it does represent us at our best. And Kansans deserve nothing less. As we, begin, as we begin the work ahead, I ask that we put forth this best version of ourselves, that we remain dedicated to seeking common ground, that we are clear and intentional about governing based on facts and telling our constituents the truth, even when it may not be what they wanna hear, that we put the well-being of Kansans ahead of partisan politics and that we are guided by grace. Let's get to it. And let me just say a special congratulations for being the first woman selected to lead the minority party in the Kansas Senate. Well, gang, we get down to business. Introduction of original motions and Senate resolutions, the clerk will read. Senate Resolution 1701 by Senators Masterson, Solitrop, and Sykes a resolution relating to the organization of the Senate, be it resolved by the Senate of the State of Kansas that the Secretary of the Senate notify the House of Representatives that the Senate is organized with the following officers. Ty Masterson, President, Rick Wilborn, Vice President, Gene Sullentrop, Majority Leader, Dinah Sykes, Minority Leader, Corey Carnahan, Secretary, Don Cackler, Sergeant at Arms, and awaits the pleasure of the House of Representatives. Here recognizes the Majority Leader from Sedgwick, Senator Solentrop. Thank you, Mr. President. I move an emergency be declared, the rules suspended, and a Senate Resolution 1701 be adopted by voice vote. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion passes. The clerk will read. Senate Resolution 1702 by Senators Masterson, Solentrop, and Sykes. A resolution relating to the assignment of seats of the Senate. Chair recognizes the Majority Leader from Sedgwick, Senator Solentrop. 
Thank you. I move a, an emergency be declared, the rules suspended, and Senate Resolution 1702 be adopted by voice vote. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. The clerk will read. Senate Resolution 1703 by Senators Masterson, Solentrop, and Sykes, a resolution relating to the rules of the Senate for the 2021 session. Here recognizes the Senator from Sedgwick, Senator Solentrop. Move an emergency be declared, rule suspended, and Senate Resolution 1703 be adopted by voice vote. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, no. Senator from, Senator from Cherokee, did you wish to address the chamber? Yeah, I would have liked to have read the rules before we voted on them. The, rule, the temporary rules were published. Correction, they've been published because they were the, the rules we governed under in the last term, and they simply gave us some parliamentary structure in which to operate under until we adopt our permanent rules. Senator from Brown. I haven't seen any rules. How do I know they're the same? On December the 7th, we had rules shoved in front of us and without objection were adopted that quick and that they had proxy in them, never before seen, not done by a deliberative body. I think that we ought to see the rules before we vote on this. This sounds makes it a little difficult. There's really nothing to look at because it's the existing rules. And you have the published, and you're welcome to vote no, by the way, and operate without parliamentary rules. And just to be clear, just so somebody doesn't feel rushed, because I don't want anybody to feel like this is some type of roughshod. If everybody's okay, I'll recast the vote and allow for some, some negative. So you've heard the motion. This is on Senate Resolution 17. 03 on temporary rules. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Motion passes. Clerk will read. Senate Resolution 1704 by Senators Masterson, Solentrop, and Sykes. A resolution adopting rules for the Senate of the state of Kansas for the terms of the senators commencing with the 2021 regular session of the legislature. This constitutes introduction of SR 1704. Introductions of bills and concurrent resolutions, the clerk will read. Senate Bill 1 by Senator McGinn, an act concerning the Kansas State Fair. Senate Bill 2 by Senator McGinn, an act concerning the Kansas State Fair. Senate Bill 3, by Joint Committee on Corrections and Juvenile Justice Oversight, an act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure. Senate Bill 4, by Joint Committee on Corrections and Juvenile Justice Oversight, an act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure. Senate Bill 5, by Joint Committee on Corrections and Juvenile Justice Oversight, an act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure. Senate Bill 6, by Joint Committee on Corrections and Juvenile Justice Oversight, an act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure. Senate Bill 7, by Joint Committee on Corrections and Juvenile Justice Oversight, an act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure. Senate Bill 8, by Joint Committee on Corrections and Juvenile Justice Oversight, an act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure. Senate Bill 9 by Senator Fausco an act concerning law enforcement officers. Senate Bill 10 by Senators Hildebrand, Fagg, Steffen, Staub, Thompson, Wilborn, and others. An act concerning labor and employment. Senate Bill 11 by Senators Hildebrand, Baumgartner, Clays, Erickson, Fagg, Kloss, Peck, Steffen, Staub, Thompson, Wilborn, and others, an act concerning elections. Senate Bill 12 by Senator Fausco Doe, an act concerning department for children and families. Senate Bill 13 by Senators Tyson, L.A. Baumgartner, Erickson, Fagg, Hildebrand, Kirshen, Longbines, Peck, Stephan, Thompson, Warren, and others, an act concerning property taxation. This constitutes introduction of SB 1 through SB 13. Communications from state officers, the clerk will read.
Your President Masterson, during the 2020 interim, I received the reports and communications listed below. This list will appear in the January 11th Senate Journal. Sincerely, Corey Carnahan. Yeah, the, the clerk will read. Messages from the governor to the Senate of the state of Kansas. <clears throat> Public member, University of Kansas Hospital Authority, Dr. Talal Khan. Public member, member State Banking Board, Lee Tatum Haskell. Public member, member, Kansas Racing and Gaming Commission, David Moses. Second Congressional District Appointee, State Civil Service Board, Thomas Wright. CDI member, Kansas Racing and Gaming Commission, Larry Turnquist. At-large banker, Kansas Banking Board, Mary Berry. Commander of the Kansas Air National Guard, Kansas National Guard, and the Office of the Adjunct, General Chris Eidler. Chief Hearing Officer, Kansas Board of Tax Appeals, Thomas Brown. Commissioner, Kansas Lottery Commission, Margaret LaRue, Jr. Commissioner, Kansas Corporation Commission, Andrew French. Member, Pooled Money Investment Board, Dennis McKinney. At-large members, Kansas Lottery Commission, Pete Brungart. Industry Representative, Kansas Human Rights Commission, Crystal Watson. Public member, KU Hospital Authority, Monty Kaufman. Public member, KU Hospital Authority, Dr. Elizabeth Henderson King. Public member, KU Hospital Authority, Roba Moran. CDI Banker, State Banking Board, Irvin Mitchell. At-large member, State Banking Board, Leonard Wolf. Public member, KU Hospital Authority, Maureen Mahoney. Governor's appointee, Capers Board of Trustees, James Zacharur. Credit Union Administrator, Vicki Hurt. Public member, Pooled Money Investment Board, Tracy Thomas. Director, Kansas Water Office, Connie Owen. Public member, employee, Employment Security Board of Review, Valerie Jacobs. Public member, KU Hospital Authority, Gregory Graves. Laura Kelly, Governor. This constitutes introduction of those appointments previously read. Two more. Clerk will read. Dear Mr. Chairman, uh, pursuant to KSA 747303, I am appointing Stu Hyde as a member of the Crime Victims Compensation Board. Sincerely, Derek Schmidt, Kansas Attorney General. Dear Senator Denning, pursuant to KSA 747303, I am reappointing Richard Samiengo as the chair of the Crime Victims Compensation Board. Sincerely, Derek Schmidt, Kansas Attorney General. Dear Senator Wagle, Stephen Gold, DC President, Kansas State Board of Healing Arts has announced the appointment of Tucker L. Pooling as Executive Director of the Board of Pending State Confirmation. Sincerely, Stephen Gold, DC President, Kansas Board of Healing Arts. To the Senate of the State of Kansas, submitted here for confirmation by the Senate are the appointments made by me as governor of the state of Kansas pursuant to law, Laurie Kelly, governor, Judge Kansas Court of Appeals, Amy Klein, Judge Kansas Court of Appeals, Carl Folsom III, Laura Kelly, governor. This constitutes the introduction of those appointments previously read, and at this time I'm referring the appointments of Klein and Folsom to the Committee on Judiciary. Please refer back to the order of business, introduction of bills, and concurrent resolutions. The clerk will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 1601 by Senators Masterson, Solentrop, and Sykes. A concurrent resolution informing the governor that the two houses of the legislature are duly organized and ready to receive communications. Be it resolved by the Senate of the State of Kansas, the House of Representatives concurring therein, that the Secretary of the Senate and the Chief Clerk of the House of Representatives be appointed to wait upon the Governor and inform the Governor that the two houses of the legislature are duly organized and are ready to receive any communications the Governor may have to present. 
just to clear any confusion and appear like we may be going too fast, I apologize. I felt we'd explain 1703 in caucus fairly thoroughly. I know, Senator from Brown, you weren't present, so I understand. But this 1601, just so everybody understands, typically we send a group to meet with the governor just to say we're organized. And we, because of the situation today, this is we are allowing the secretary to make that communication for us. So that is what this resolution is and what we're voting on. Chair recognizes the majority leader from Sedgwick, Senator Solentrop. Thank you. I move an emergency be declared, the rule suspended, and SCR 1601 be adopted by voice vote. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. In compliance with 1601, the Secretary of the Senate will join the Chief Clerk of the House to notify the governor that the legislature is organized and ready to receive communication. For an announcement, the chair recognizes the senator from Johnson, Senator Warren. Thank you. Is this on? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to call a meeting of Senate Judiciary rather than at the rail. Colleagues, uh, if you'll just stay at your desk, please, and we'll conduct our meeting at our desks in the chamber. So this is a bit unusual for those that are incumbents, but instead of trying to depart from the chamber, ball up by the rail, do it there, we're going to actually just do it right here. So at this point, the Senate is at ease. Uh, Chair, Chairwoman Warren can call Judiciary Committee to order. The rest of you are just audience. And this is for bill introduction. So Senator Warren. Thank you, Mr. President. The meeting of the Senate Judiciary is called to order. We do have a quorum present, and I'd like to call for bill introductions. I do have a bill introduction. It's RS-0244, an act concerning governmental response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Kansas. Any objection to its introduction? Hearing none, seeing none, the bill is so introduced. The meeting of the Senate Judiciary is adjourned. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And the Senate is now back in order. Please refer back to that order of business, introductions of bills and concurrent resolutions. The clerk will read. Senate Bill 14, an act concerning governmental response to COVID-19 pandemic in Kansas. This constitutes the introduction of SB 14. At this time, I'm referring SB 14 to the Committee on the Judiciary. I would like to announce the Kansas Academy of Family Physicians has agreed again to sponsor the Doctor of the Day program this session. We thank the Academy and the Board President, Dr. Chad Johanning, for providing this outstanding service in the State House. Are there announcements? Senator from Johnson, Senator Warren. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to announce that Senate Judiciary tomorrow at 1030 will be hearing um, the, um, I guess, RS, or excuse me, Senate Bill 14, uh, an act concerning governmental response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Kansas. Thank you, Mr. President. Further announcements. Senator from Lynn, Senator Tyson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to announce the Senate Tax Committee will meet and have a hearing tomorrow on Senate Bill 13. And Wednesday, we will be having a hearing on a bill that will be introduced tomorrow on income tax, so it will be available. And also, Mr. President, I would like to thank you for bringing Pastor Washington back. I know he's left the chamber. Um, he sends a Excellent message for us daily. I, I hope we take it to heart. Thank you, Mr. President. Further announcements, Senator from Cowley, Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Fed and State will be meeting tomorrow at 1030 to hear a report from the Lottery Commission. Further announcements, Senator from Sherman, Senator Billinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Senate Ways and Means will meet at 1030 tomorrow, and we'll have some updates and introductions. Thank you. Further announcements, Senator from Johnson, Senator Baumgartner. Oh, Miami, you got me. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Senate Education will be meeting tomorrow at 1.30. Senator from Sedgwick, Senator Peterson. Senate Transportation will be meeting tomorrow morning, 8.30 in our normal room. Uh, bill introductions and staff introductions. Senator from Johnson, Senator Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senate on Utilities will meet at 1.30, 548 South, 
Bill introductions and staff introductions. Senator from Sedgwick, Senator Kershaw. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate Agriculture and Natural Resources will meet at 8.30 tomorrow morning for bill introductions, and that's all. Thank you. Senator from Lyons, Senator Longvine. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate, it's tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, Senate Insurance will meet tomorrow morning at 9.30 and 5.46 South for uh, organization, committee rules, and a bill introduction. Senator from Johnson, Senator Olson. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Senate uh, Commerce will not Meet this week. We'll just uh, wait and get organized and start next week. Thank you. Senator from Cherokee, Senator Hildebrand. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate uh, Public Health and Welfare is still meeting tomorrow, but there is a change in the agenda. KDHE will not be there to give us a presentation on the COVID vaccination issues. Regret regrettably, they were not able to make it. So just want to put that out. We are still going to do bill introductions and introduction of staff and organization. Thank you. Senator from Sedgwick, Senator McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, local government will be meeting at 930 and we'll have an update on the status of our local, our, our rural and urban hospitals. Since this is the first week I'm announcing this, but generally um, I'll just share that, uh, make sure you keep track of your calendar. Thank you. Quick reminder to stop by the secretary's desk to sign your oath of office on the way out. Uh, any further announcements? S Senator, Senator from Douglas, Senator Francisco. Thank you, Mr. President. Not an announcement, but a question. Um, has there been an announcement of our Senate plans to meet tomorrow? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Is the Senate planning to meet tomorrow at 2.30 as published in the calendar? That will come in the announcement by the majority leader, and I, we're going to probably be, we'll be pro forma tomorrow, so the committees can meet, and we won't do all, we won't do business on the floor. And I have an announcement to make. Please do. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senate Democrats will caucus tomorrow at 2:30 p.m. in our usual room, 287 North. Members may join by Zoom. Very good. Seeing no further announcements, Senator from Sedgwick, Majority Leader Solentrop. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Office of the Majority Leader handles the uh, packets on nominations. Uh, we have numerous um, nominees. Any of those packets you would care to review, uh, contact our office and uh, we can get those to you. Mr. President, I move the Senate adjourn pro forma until 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday, January 12, 2021. Let's pause a minute. Senator from Lynn, you have Point of order, Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I need you to refer Senate Bill 13 to the Tax Committee. We did not refer, and it wasn't in the script. So since it is here and present, we weren't sure we had it in time. We can return to that order of business, and I will refer SB 13 to the Tax Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, quick announcement. There will be professional photography after for those that want to do the pictures with family and families welcome to come in and work through that. Now, the, the motion on the table, um, actually, Senator Solter, why don't you repeat the motion? Move the Senate adjourn pro forma until 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday, January 12, 2021. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The Senate is adjourned.